Frederick had been a farmer in a beautiful village hidden behind mountain peaks for over a decade. The man started almost from scratch. He was a self-made man who worked hard to achieve everything he had. And now he enjoyed doing what he loved and created jobs for dozens of his employees. Frederick was always respectful of his subordinates, was never late with the wages, and saw them more as his friends than the help, which made every local resident respect the old man. No one ever had a bad word to say about him. The farmer adored the village he lived in. He loved nature and fresh air and treated animals like children. The man rejoiced at every new day, loved natural products, and would never exchange his lifestyle for a noisy city life. Frederick used to enjoy drinking herbal tea in the morning and reading the fresh newspapers sitting on his terrace. He saw the beauty in every season, so he always admired the nature around him. The farmer had an only child. He was raising his daughter, Paula, on his own, since his wife, Anna, died during childbirth. The man always tried to give his daughter the best of everything. He worked hard to be able to spoil his little princess, but as soon as the girl turned 16, it was as if she got replaced by someone else. Paula started hanging out with a bad crowd and seemed to have lost all respect for her father, only turning to him for money. The young woman had a rather obstinate temper. She often ran away from home to one party or another and didn't want to listen to what her father had to say about it. Paula dreamed of moving out of the village as soon as possible. She didn't even want to think about working on the farm. So, one day, she simply told Frederick that she was leaving for the city. The old man was reluctant to accept his daughter's decision, but he didn't really have a choice, even though he understood that he would be losing her. And he was right. Paula left for the city and disappeared from her father's life. She barely ever called him, and then, eventually, she stopped doing it altogether. The old man knew virtually nothing about her life. All that he knew was that she had gotten married and had a son. But no matter how hard Frederick tried to get a hold of her, he couldn't. She strictly forbade her friends to give any information about her whereabouts to her father. There were rumors that Paula started abusing alcohol and was even using some illegal drugs. But unfortunately, the old man couldn't do anything to help. And so he lived alone for many years. That winter morning, a knock on the door interrupted the man's morning ritual. Frederick stepped out onto the porch and was very surprised to see a crowd of hunters and villagers in his yard. The crowd was led by the village chairman. He was a very unpleasant and slippery person. His every word was a lie. His every phrase was full of hypocrisy. There were many rumors about him going around the village. One of them claimed that the deputy governor himself was his best friend. Allegedly, they got together often and even went hunting together. Such connections allowed the chairman to engage in illegal logging without facing any consequences, and he didn't even try to hide it. Moreover, the insolent man insisted, rather emotionally, that they needed to hunt down all the wolves in the region. He gathered volunteers, made passionate speeches, and thus pushed the locals to share his point of view. Frederick was strongly against it. He stood up to the chairman and tried to point out how wrong that decision was. It's as if you weren't born in the village. You know that the forest would be a mess without predators. They keep it in order. You know that. Why shoot them? Does it seem like something fun to you? The old man objected. But the man only waved his hands in response and continued to insist. While you are here protecting these cruel animals, they stole five sheep from your neighbor last week and then they dragged off three more yesterday. Who will compensate for the losses? The wolves will soon get your farm too, trust me. And they won't care about your age. They'll just take what they want, the chairman argued, getting more and more agitated. But Frederick only shook his head angrily. The chairman's words had no effect on him. No, I won't help you with it. I can't seem to change your mind, but there is no way I'm going to be part of this Insanity. I would have to be out of my mind to shoot innocent animals, the old man answered firmly. The man was known for his decisive character. He always had his own take on things. Moreover, Frederick understood that the wolves couldn't have killed so many sheep in such a short time. 
there was something strange going on, but he couldn't figure out what exactly that was. Soon, Frederick heard the sound of shots coming from the forest and the barking of dogs. The old man clutched his heart, realizing that the hunters would now exterminate all the wolves in the region. Frederick understood why the chairman wanted to do it. The wild animals interfered with his illegal logging. Because they attacked the dogs and scared away the lumberjacks, basically, they got in the way of all his money making. But having his suspicions wasn't enough. Frederick needed hard evidence, and he didn't have any. Then, in the middle of the night, one of his staff ran up to Frederick. He was shouting loudly, grabbed the old man by the arm and led him straight to the sheep paddock. The man drove away the sheep and pointed to a corner covered in sheep's wool. At first, Frederick couldn't make out what the man wanted to show him, but then his eyes got used to the dark and he gasped. There was a wolf pup hiding in the white wool. The old man realized that the animal had probably managed to escape the hunt somehow and was now looking for salvation in the cattle paddock. Apparently, one of the pregnant sheep sensed the pup and hid him. The maternal instinct turned out to be that strong. The farmer scratched his head and wondered what he should do next. In the end, he decided to save the pup. The old man hid the animal in his house. He made a bed for him and fed him goat milk, and over time he started giving him meat and bones. The wolf pup became Frederick's best friend. Although he did have his wild instincts, he behaved mostly like an ordinary dog. And very soon, something else happened. Something that completely changed the old man's life. One day, the old farmer got up early in the morning and went out into the yard. He liked to wake up at dawn and weed the beds behind the house or clean the garden. He usually worked a little, then sat down on a bench to have a rest. Then he got back to work. It kept the garden clean and let Frederick have a daily workout. When he sat down for yet another break, he noticed a stranger standing near the fence. The young man was pacing uncertainly near the gate. He was tall and handsome, dressed in city clothes. Frederick slowly approached the guest and then the young man threw himself on Frederick's neck and started crying. Imagine the old man's surprise at that moment. As it turned out, it was Frederick's grandson. Bruno said that his mother Paula had died a few years ago, and she never spoke much about her father. All the young man knew was his address in the village. After the death of his mother, the young man was foolish enough to get involved with a bad group of people. His friends decided to rob a gas station, and Bruno was on the lookout. When the police arrived, everyone fled, and the young man got detained. At the police station, the young man took all the blame for the robbery. In the meantime, his mother's boyfriend sold their apartment and spent all the money on alcohol. Thus, Bruno was left with nothing when he got out of prison. The old man was shocked by what he had heard. Tears were rolling down his cheeks. Frederick couldn't bear the thought that his daughter was no longer alive and that his grandson had suffered such hardships. The grandfather invited Bruno into his house and arranged for him to work on the farm. His grandson turned out to be an honest but a rather strange man. He wasn't afraid of any kind of work and became real family to the old man. Over time, the young man met a woman. Eliza was the daughter of the local miller. The two of them became friends, after which their relationship developed into a romantic one. Bruno also got along well with the wolf pup named Ray, who got saved by the old man. The two became inseparable, like best friends. But despite it all, the animal had to go back into the forest. The wolf was clearly hearing the call of the wild and was showing its predatory instincts more and more often. The farmer was reluctant to let the animal go, but he knew it was the right thing to do. A year has passed. The chairman and his team continued to hunt down the wolves. It's also worth noting that the loss of livestock had increased even more. Trying to find out why the animals were disappearing, Bruno decided to investigate the matter on his own, and suddenly disappeared without a trace. The old man was devastated. He had no idea what to do and where to look for his grandson. Meanwhile, the chairman kept insisting on hunting down all the wolves in the forest, as if there were no other things to do in the village. A man had disappeared, but no one did anything to try and find him. 
The district police officer only pretended to work, but in fact, he also followed the orders of the chairman. And he only cared about wolves and money. The only one who came to Frederick's aid at such a difficult time was Ray, the wolf he'd once rescued. The farmer called for his old friend, and Ray came, poked his nose into the man's hand, and led him into the forest. Following the predator, the old man found himself near an old hut, and when he opened the door, he was stunned. Bruno was tied up on the floor, and sheepskins were lying all around him. The young man spent two days there and was exhausted. The chairman's gang even threatened to kill him because they found out that Bruno was sticking his nose into their affairs. As it turned out, the ringleader was stealing cattle specifically to make the locals mad at the wolves, and the motive for it was the illegal logging, which the wolves were interfering with. Basically, Frederick was right in his assumptions. The predators were causing losses to the chairman's illegal business. Frederick untied his grandson and brought him back to the village. The young man could barely stand on his feet, so he had to rest every couple of minutes. Having reached the house, the farmer turned to the federal law enforcement agency. The investigators immediately arrived and detained all those responsible. At that point, the chairman could no longer hush anything up. His friends turned their back on him, and the insolent man was taken into custody and sentenced to some serious time in prison. Bruno continued to help his grandfather on the farm and date the young Eliza. They soon got married and went on to enjoy their life together. The young people had a baby girl, making Frederick a great-grandfather. He spent his days helping take care of the baby and rejoiced at all of her achievements. Later, he took care of all the paperwork to officially hand his farm over to Bruno. The old man retired, giving way to young people because he saw that his grandson was a great manager and he was sure that he would do a great job.